Hello everyone and welcome back to Simon Security Expert or welcome to the channel if you're new here. Today we're going to be fitting a front door contact onto this door here. This is the wire for it, but shortly I'm going to bring you around and do a chest view and I just think where it is right now, I'll be able to give you a good shot of exactly what it is I'm doing. So when you buy the front door contact, you have a magnet. They both look the same, but the difference is behind. You have a magnet, the magnet goes onto the door and you have the contact, there it is, with these on the back. These two silver ones here connect to the reed switch, which is on the other side. And a handy tip is the back of these come out. Oh, oh, nearly dropped it. Try not to drop them because the reed switch, which is this part here on the back, is actually quite brittle. If you drop it like I almost just did, you'll probably break it and need to get another one. Let's get started. I'm gonna fit this to the architrave. I'm going to fit the magnet to the door and then I'll show you how to wire it in at the panel. And at the end, I'll give you a quick tip in case you've got a brand new door. There's a vital piece of information that you will need to know. Let's go. So here we are at the door. And this is the contact with the terminals in the back here. And you have some options for knockouts and what you can do for the cable entry. First job I'm going to do, I'm going to be bringing this cable into this corner section here. So get your snips and cut that corner piece out. That makes room for the cable to go in. Now that you've done that, get your cable. We'll get this ready. Cut this back a little bit. We don't need all this. And expose the inner cores of the cable. For this, I'm going to twist blue and yellow together. That's what I'll be using for the alarm circuit. You don't have to. You can use any color combination that you want, but industry standard is often blue and yellow twisted together with the green and white for the tamper. So let's twist them together as well. And red and black for good measure. Let's twist them together. You can cut a pair of the cables away if you want to, but I always think it's very good to have them as a spare. Let's get these ready. Clip the cables back to expose the inner sheet of the cable. Do that for the green and white. For the green and white, you can just twist together because they won't be used. And for the red and black, which is usually used for power, won't be used either because on this door contacts and on the vast majority of door contacts, there is no aux power. Here we go. So here is the door contact. Handy tip, these can pop out. There's the reed switch on the back. Let's unscrew, not all the way, but unscrew the silver screws. They have a washer that's underneath. So now you have your door contact, unscrew the silver screws, and you've got your blue and yellow here. Now you're gonna to want to wrap one end round and underneath the screw and the washer. This can be a bit fiddly the first time you're doing it, so don't worry if it takes you a few attempts. Let's tighten this up. Handy tip, wrap the cable round in a clockwise direction. It just makes it get a better grab underneath the screw, stops it from coming out. So now with the other one, we're going to do the same again. In this case, we're using the yellow. Put that through in a clockwise direction, wrap it round, now tighten her up. Now you have these gold screws, which you can just use to tidy up the other inner cores. In this case, red and black, and put that underneath there, the green and white into the other side. So we have the zone across the silver screws, I have a spare over here under the gold and another spare, which is actually the tamper underneath the other side of the gold. So that goes into there, push that right the way in and push the cable into the slot there that we cut out before. So now we have the cable in place. We can turn this round, put this into position and using a very thin drill bit, as you can see here, we go through and make pilot holes. Now you've made your pilot hole, get your screw, pop it through, get your small Phillips and screw that into the architrave. You want around about a 2.5 millimeter drill bit, two millimeters, 2.5 millimeter drill bit to make your pilot hole, whether it's wood or metal. Now, once you're happy with that fit, then get your drill and make sure it's 
lined up right and drill through for the other hole. I don't like to drill them both at the same time because it feels like I never really get it quite perfectly level and flat. So I get one screw in first and get it exactly where I want it and then I drill through for the second you screw, pop it through and that now is a nice lovely fit. Now it's time for the magnet. You always want to put your magnet on the door. You, you want the reed switch off the door and your magnet on the door. When doing these, a lot of mistakes I see people make is they push them right up together. You have around about half an inch to an inch of space that can be between them and it will still close the reed switch no problem. You don't want these touching because doors swell and things like that. You want a little bit of space between them and it'll work fine. Now drill the pilot hole and let's screw on the magnet onto the door. Get that nice and straight. And there we have it guys. A nice neat job with your contact on the frame and your magnet on the door. So now that we have that in place and that's all wired into there, we need to go and wire this into the alarm control panel. Here we have it guys. This is a Veritas R8. Now on here, you have the zones, zone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to be wiring in to zone one, which is quite common practice for a door contact. See here, the cable is labeled. Always label your cables when you're bringing them back to the panel. It makes the job of wiring it up so much easier. So I need to expose the inner sheaths, put these together the same way we did at the front door, cut back the sheath on the blue and yellow, pop these in to zone one or whichever zone you plan to put the contact on. Contacts can sometimes be used for windows and things like that. So you might have it on a different number. There we go. And we're now going to tighten this up. We will wrap the red and black around the cable just to keep it tidy. And the green and white will go into the tamper, which is just here to the left of the zones. Since this is the only device on this system currently, that will be the only ones going into the tamper circuit. However, if you have more than one device that's on the system, the tamper circuit goes into series and you make a daisy chain. And you do that so that if any device's tamper gets cut or opened, it will trigger a tamper alarm, a global tamper on the intruder alarm. But with this being just the one sensor that's on here at the moment, we'll pop these into the terminal and tighten these up. And there we have it. You have now wired and fitted a front door contact onto the door and into the panel. I did say at the beginning that I'm going to give you a very useful tip if you have a new door. And that is, if you do get a new door and you need the door contact fitted back on, what I would advise is not drilling the door. Use super glue to put on the contact and the magnet and stick them onto the door rather than drill the door. It won't cause any damage or make the door not work or anything like that in any way. But if your door fails, say in six months time, and then you call out the company who fitted the door to say it's not working, I need to return it and get a new one or anything like that. They could well say, well, you've drilled the door, so now your warranty is voided. So to protect yourself from that, if it's a brand new door, rather than screw it on, use super glue and just protect yourself from that. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope it's been helpful. Is there any other type of devices you'd like to see me wire and fit? Let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can because I'm going to make a few more videos of all different types of alarm equipment showing you exactly how to do it and how to make your life a little bit easier. Thanks very much.